Welcome back to the second day of Streaming Media West 2018. I'm Tim Siglin, contributing editor with Streaming Media Magazine and the founding executive director of the not-for-profit Help Me Stream. Today I've got our first interview of the day with Mike Smith from Mainstreaming. Mike, you're a VP of Engineering, is that correct? I am, yes. So what is Mainstreaming? So mens Mainstreaming is a brand new content delivery a network, one of the okay. newest ones in the industry. And uh, really we are, unlike a lot of the other CDNs who have had you know, a foothold for some time now, mm -hmm. we're very video focused, very video centric. Interesting, and is that live video, on demand video? Both? Live and on demand video, yes, and audio as well. Okay, so from a live video standpoint, what are sort of the unique selling propositions for you all, you know, you're, you say you're video focused, but what, what is it that makes the live with you better than say the live with Akamai or Limelight or something. Yeah, Tim, else. I would say that's probably the most common question that we get is, sure. well, how are you any different from the Akamais and the Limelights of the world mm -hmm. that have been at it for a while? Uh, as I mentioned, we're very video focused, mm -hmm. uh, but we've architected our network very different from some of the traditional CDNs. The traditional approach, and really, at the time when traditional CDN was developed and launched, mm -hmm. the internet was a very different landscape. The way packets were, uh, were routed, the way mm -hmm. video was streamed on the internet, I mean, shoot, video at, initially was, was an afterthought, or not necessarily an afterthought, but it wasn't as fully mature. The initial idea was to accelerate websites. Right. So a lot of our competitors, when they, when they went into this industry and when they did this, they architected networks to do just that, mm -hmm. to, to speed up the delivery of pieces, elements, images, right, whatever right, right, it may right. be. So over the years, they've been able to adapt that technology and stream video fairly efficiently and mm -hmm. fairly effectively. Where we came at this is ultimately a little bit later in the game than some of the other CDNs. However, we focused entirely on video. So we built what we call our hypernode technology. And it's really, for lack of a, uh, for using a marketing or sales term, it's the special sauce, right? Okay. And so that, essentially, our hypernode technology is an orchestrator. It's an algorithm uh, that can make okay. intelligent decisions, can dynamically route and change pathing uh, on the fly to create a very smooth and very high quality experience. And would that also work from a load balancing standpoint? A absolutely, and where we've leveraged our network differently than some of the other competitors is, rather than, um, you know, for, for many years in the CDN space, it's been a numbers game. How mm -hmm. many pops, sure. how many sure, servers sure. do you have? Right. And for many, many years, that was a very relevant question. Right. As we deal with the topography, uh, topography of the public internet today, it's very different. So what we have focused on really is, is paid pairing arrangements with different interconnections and Good. I was, in fact, I was going to ask about that, given the fact that we we went through the whole federated model for a while, and that mm -hmm. didn't really pan out. Peering arrangements seem to be a, a key element. They they really are, and that's that's actually given us a lot of abilities. So we, today we operate uh, the sixth largest interconnected network in the world. Actually, oh wow, yeah, surprisingly. Okay. And uh, and so we've been able to to make up. That's really been from a foundational level. It, any CDN is only as good as its foundation. Mm -hmm. So we've determined at a foundational level, that's really where we had to, to really put a lot of finite okay. focus in, that makes is sense. doing that. So 2,500 plus uh, interconnections uh, mm. globally. So we're able to do more with less. Okay. Our goal ultimately as a CDN is to create what's, what we call our one hop experience. Mm. So only one hop, traversing on the public internet. Okay. And that really allows us a lot of economies of scale, of mm -hmm. course allows us to operate a bit leaner than some of the other And that folks. one hop includes the last mile it does. of the consumer. Yeah. Wow. Our goal is to get from the edge of our network mm -hmm. to the end user with you know, to the end user's DMARC if we can sure. with one hop. Okay, very nice. Now, obviously from a latency standpoint, if you can achieve that goal, that's pretty significant. So it sets you up nicely for live. On demand, though, um, having the 2500 that you described, does that mean you have to have a plethora of storage and caches and all those edge locations? No, it's a very good question. So we're able to to leverage a couple main distribution points for storage okay. per se. Okay. Um, ultimately, we've been able to cross-connect and interconnect our network in such a way that we're able to operate very efficiently with the interconnections the way they are mm -hmm. today. On demand, we, we support a number of different models. So today, with our dynamic ingestibilities, our hypernode technology, I should say, isn't limited to just edge-based delivery to the customer. Okay. We also use it internally. 
So from, uh, from our ingest to the origin of the customer, allowing for a dynamic mesh, if you will, of right. ingest. Okay. So that allows us to operate very efficiently as well. So in, in the sense of, and with a lot of mid and large size uh, broadcasters and a lot of our current customer base today, mm -hmm. we have quite a blend of customers who will, uh, will want us to rely on them as the origin mm -hmm. versus our smaller to mid-sized customers that want to essentially upload our user right. APIs to put, right. put uh, items into our storage. Okay. So both models. Yeah. So, in some ways, you have a hybrid between what the traditional Akamai multiple pops and storage at the edge and Limelight, which was strictly just a core network. Absolutely. That's interesting that you're taking the best of both worlds. Do you also support legacy streaming formats like RTMP? Yeah, you know, it, it, today we're not supporting RTMP from the edge to the customer. We're okay. using RTMP, RTP, RTSP, as the SRT ingest. as transport in the okay. ingest. Okay, got it. But we've really focused, like, like many others right. in the industry sure. on the HTTP delivered experience. And, and it allows you ultimately to get away from the legacy baggage of having to try to deliver that out to the it, it does. We also serve a certain subset of audio based only customers mm -hmm. and they have some demands as well or some requirements as well. Um, we still support uh, an IceCast audio suite mm -hmm. and Shoutcast okay. sure. audio suite. Sure, sure. Well, not as common in the video space, there's right. still a lot of the, the radio broadcasters oh, out there that are leveraging that yeah. technology and we still fully support So that. what do you see as trends, you know, we're coming down to the end of 2018. If, if I were to sit down with you at Stream Media East in May of 2019, what would be the trends that you would have seen between now and then? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I mean, we have seen such an explosion of OTT and, and ultimately, one of our focuses, uh, we have many different focuses and, and uh, industries that we focus on. However, one of them being, of course, OTT broadcasters, mm -hmm. even faith-based ministries. Sure. And we've seen a huge push in, in not only adopting that technology, but educating folks. Mm. Um, the broadcast space for so many years has operated in, in and maybe the term in a vacuum is a sure. bit extreme, yeah. but they've in operated bubble, in, in their bubble. Yeah, right. You know, um, iron transmitters or steel right. transmitters are the top of mountaintops right. and very right. traditional right. broadcast elements. Mm. So the space of OTT, initially broadcasters didn't want to, to wrap their arms around right. that. They saw that almost as, I know, ultimately the enemy, you know? Uh, very true. Very true, initially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've seen such a shift in recent years of the, the traditional broadcaster really wrapping their arms around that and saying, oh, yeah, I, I need to be in OTT. And in fact, I can get to more people via OTT than I could during uh, through traditional means. And that brings up an interesting question. Uh, one of the discussions I had yesterday with, with an interviewee was around the whole you know traditional engineer, cl class one license um, versus the IT guy. The IT guy isn't going to go get a, a class one license to be qualified as a broadcast engineer. Mm -hmm. Broadcast engineer may be a little hesitant on packet movement, but ultimately understands that IP delivery is coming, and that's you know where we need to focus. Where do you where do you find the balance of people who understand both, or or is that still a dichotomy? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so I initially in my career, I was actually a broadcast engineer. Okay, I started so off as a radio engineer. There you have it. Uh, went up to transmitter sites in the tops of mountains and worked on analog gear back mm. in the day. Okay. And so um, I think initially as I, I like to refer to them as the old graybeards. Yeah, sure. Because there still sure. are a lot of well, old graybeards out there. You gray in your beard. Well, but... oh, stop it. I have a little... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the old graybeards that are out there, you know, initially they were very resistant. And, right. and knowing that community very well, right. being plugged in with the si well, Society they, of the, Broadcast their, Engineers. The test they were having to take to be certified had nothing to do with IP delivery. It, it, exactly. It didn't. Not right. at all. Right. Um, so initially they were very against it. I think once uh, that subset of folks embrace the fact that, holy mackerel, I can do a heck of a lot with IP. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that in the radio business where you know companies like Tyline, for example, came out with IP-enabled gear, allowing you to, to send broadcast quality stereo audio mm -hmm. at, sure. at CD sample rates right. over the internet right. and with very low latency. To replace with, the Zephyrs and ISDN. You got it, the old downs. Zephyr, the yeah. expensive ISDN yeah. bonded mm -hmm. ISDNs for Zephyrs and such, <laughs> uh, and even some of the old POTS gear to, yeah. to yeah, transmit yeah. audio. So, um, so yeah, when when we, when we saw that subset of folks really start to embrace that, mm -hmm. I really feel like the rest of it kind of fell into place. Okay. Because as you look at like the modern day newsroom or the modern day media organization, mm -hmm. it's made up of a very strong subset of everyone from millennials, right. yes, I use the magic word, to right. zennials, right. Sure. to even the Gen Xers. Right. And that generation of, of working 
uh, of, of the working staff of these organizations, they're in social media. They right. know the value of right. social media restreaming. Right. They know the value of delivering online. Mm -hmm. And I think there is, I think it's accepted now and it will continue. If you ask me the question at East, I would say this, that we continue to see the, the value of delivering content on the internet, mm -hmm. whether that's IP-based TV, like YouTube TV. Right. Um, and so being in a situation like mainstreaming and being very video focused on this, you know, we see tremendous growth. I mean, nice. billions and billions of dollars of growth. Sure. So we plan to stay the course and continue to build out our network in the U.S. and continue to expand our U.S. operations. Well, from an engineering standpoint, I'd say mainstreaming is lucky to have you having oh, that thanks. background <laughs> and this background. We'll be right back. This has been uh, Mike from Mainstreaming.